Use structured data to highlight the uniqueness and specificity of your content with Martha Van Berkel from Schema App. Brought to you by Majestic, I'm David Bain and this is SEO in 2022. Martha, what is your number one SEO tip for 2022? It's time to get specific, right? So be specific. And and the reason this is, is you want to showcase that uniqueness. Um, and this is where structured data allows you to articulate that. But specificity, try to say that three times really fast. Specificity, specificity, no. specificity. <laughs> I said it once, that's enough. <laughs> so <laughs> should every site be using structured data? Is this only for certain types of sites? Can sites with only a few pages just get away with not using structured data? No. <laughs> like everyone needs to do structured data. And, you know, if you were asking me back in 2015, when I first started doing this, I'd be like, oh, you can be, you know, really an innovator and lead user, but it's it's not going away. And in fact, like Google continues to lean into it. And, you know, by evidence of just like in the last year, like 52% of the documentation updates were specific to structured data. Um, you know, Google has used structured data in order to communicate around COVID. Um, you know, we're seeing sort of the different types of Evolve. We're seeing Google participate actively, you know, in the conversations around the vocabulary around schema.org. This this is not going away. So it's important for you to to look at, you know, what you need to do it on on your site, whether it be small. Um, but if you want to be understood and you want to, you know, the search engines to be rewarding you with that traffic, which is what we all want, uh, then you should be doing this. So how can you use that word uniqueness that you use and actually make your site um, look unique in the SERP? Um, what structured data data is best to mark up in order to do that. And I guess we'll not every site be using the same structured data. Well, it really is about talking about who your business is, right? So when we start these conversations, it's, it's really around like, well, what makes your business unique? You know, who are you and what do you sell? What services do you offer? Um, and, and how are those services or products different from, you know, what your neighbor does or, or what your competitor does? And, and so it's not so much that the structured data needs to be unique, but you're articulating the things about your business and what it is and, and what you're offering and, and sort of what's different about that. And it's not necessarily focusing on that difference. It's about making sure you're super clear about what it is. And so when we talk about specificity, it's, you know, you don't just sell blue t-shirts. You sell blue t-shirts that are made uh, with linen and that are manufactured in Canada and that, you know, have Bugs Bunny on the front or whatever that is, right? So, you know, that's sort of when I talk about specificity and the uniqueness, it's it's really about those things. A lot of businesses are actually quite poor about writing about themselves. So the, the About Us page typically tends to be an afterthought to a product page or a sales page, but um, in structured data, it's exceptionally important. So how, how do you advise businesses to write about themselves? And is it perhaps a good idea to even get a third party to do that writing on their their own behalf? Yeah, so the About page, I think, is like an area that you can articulate, you know, deeper things. So, you know, often I say like the home page would be your organization or the corporation, depending on sort of what type of company you are. And then the About about page is, is really, you know, talking about the about page. What else are you talking about? So it might be sort of you want to illustrate and talk about the founders. You might want to talk about sort of extra different elements. But I think like those are kind of core things. The thing that I think is most important, though, is that you're not just doing generic markup across everything, right? And, um, you know, John o, uh, Yost and I have great debates about like, is it a web page? Of course, it's a web page, right? Like, what is the page actually talking about? And so when you think about sort of, you know, I always talk about like the five kind of key pages in your site. So, you know, what is the company, right? What do you do? You know, what are your products and services? You know, um, do you have locations that you need to articulate? And then what is also that key content that you're trying to use to attract those users? And and then, you know, what are those questions and answers you're trying to do? And I, when I say key content, you know, I really am seeing such a like tight, um, like marriage between content. So when you talk about the about page and writing, that that content, those people writing content are so, so, so important because when you're actually writing content, you should be not just thinking about how you're going to attract that user and engage with that user. So that title, those descriptions, that actual content, but how are you also going to stand up and make a really great first impression to attract them in search? And so we spend a lot of time with our clients um, after sort of talking about 
out and making sure we're, we're capturing all that uniqueness and the content on those pages articulate sort of the specificity of what they're offering, what they're selling, what they're doing. We're then also architecting their content and their pages in order to really stand out in that sort of first impression, right? Like we have a first opportunity to make a first impression and to really sort of capture, you know, the visual real estate sort of in the SERP. And that's, I think, where it's sort of beautiful around, you know, then the content writers thinking about that or, you know, the website, you know, page architects, which, you know, in some organizations are a different team, you know, thinking about the components so that you really splash, like really make that amazing first impression. And, and that's what I would say, like our, you know, our year two and year three, like that's where we get really excited uh, with the organizations that we work with to do that. Okay. So company products, locations, key content and Q&A, uh, five great areas for people to think about where to use structured data. My instinct is that um, SEOs would be more likely to incorporate markup data in company products locations, but perhaps miss out key content and Q&A. Is, is that right? It, it's where they're not necessarily thinking strategically about it or planning for it, right? And so, and this is again, where we always come back to like, what is the business goal of the website and acquisition and SEO? And often they're like, well, we need to convert new customers, right? We, or we need to get net new eyes. Like that's what they're trying to do. And so if you're then writing content and doing webinars and doing these things to attract, you know, to drive demand, well, why aren't you then making sure that those are standing out, right? Like the, the location and the company and, you know, the people and the products and services, those are sort of in that consideration phase, but what else are you doing sort of higher up in the funnel? And, and again, you should be using structured data to attract people across that different life cycle. And so that's sort of what we need them to think about is that it's not just a, you know, here, these are the basic pieces, but like, what is strategic for the business? What are you trying to get new eyes and clicks on? You know, those are the things you should also be doing structured data on. So it's just as important um, to have structured data on an an evergreen blog post that brings in lots of traffic compared with um, a products page or a page about the company. Absolutely. And and then again, you know, as you think about, you know, what we specialize in is around sort of like, then how do you implement it at scale? So it's not a pain, um, but mm -hmm. it just sort of happens. Like that's sort of then how you can look at different solutions that, that help you do that. But again, the strategy part is so important. So where are some of the key places that um, Google incorporate um, rich snippets or um, use of that structured data in their SERP or perhaps in other places online that SEOs may not be completely aware of? So I think you have to think about like the, again, that whole experience and the different places that they're doing. But, you know, I, I love um, like FAQ is one that we've seen Google play a lot with across this entire year. And, and what I love about FAQ is that you're literally answering questions that people have sort of, you know, which is often sort of what's informing content or when you're thinking about buyer journey, sort of where those fill up. So, so I love how sort of Google is, is providing FAQ on specific questions people are asking. So this kind of goes back to my recommendation for 2022 around getting super specific is that, you know, FAQs allow you to not just answer that specific question with you, you know, like a title description, you know, meta tags, but then allows you to give context and then also frankly measure what people are actually, you know, what's their second question? What are the things that they want to actually delve into um, to do that? So I think like that experience of truly guiding your user. And, and FAQ is one where, again, it's had four questions, it's had two questions, you know, it's it's sort of not showing up for like generic questions, but it's showing up now still for very specific. It's a tool that you can use across any type of content and that you can make sure you're also calling out like this FAQ is about this super specific area that you're trying to answer or show up or, or search for. Um, the other area that we're seeing Google sort of lean into or evolve sort of the experience in, um, I'm seeing a lot of evidence around um, e-commerce. So we're not surprised, you know, more and more people are buying online, but sort of again with around specificity, um, they're asking, you know, Google's adding into schema.org you know, size, weight, um, specific um, colors, like attributes, specificity, you know, where it's manufactured, et cetera. So you can see Google moving towards um, looking for answers to questions. I'm, I'm even seeing TV adverts with, with Google advertising themselves and actually advertising themselves as a, as a find engine almost, um, almost as a version of Ask Jeeves 20 years after that yes. existed. <laughs> um, so 
Is there a way to mark up your content then to say to Google, this is the question and this is the answer, and this is specifically the piece of text that is the answer to the question? Absolutely. So that's like where question and answer come in. Now, um, you know, historically they had Speakable as a beta, and and this we haven't seen really move. And in fact, like in 2019 when they they brought out how to and FAQ, we're seeing sort of those. I'll say like be more specific um, as. as sort of Google leaning into those different rich results versus sort of the speakable where you would actually say context. Google's using natural language processing in order to extract it. And we're seeing that sort of throughout this year where they started highlighting certain passages. Now, what's also interesting about um, NLP is around video. So this is sort of another area that I'm seeing Google lean into. And it was, you know, one of the areas that John Mueller specifically highlighted in his Google I.O. sort of search update. And, And so this is where clips, right? So clips are sort of the kind of segment of text in a video, right, that you're asking sort of with regards to to sort of a piece. And what they're, they're now saying is you can highlight interesting clips within your video, or you can tell us how your video URLs are structured, and we will do natural language processing to identify important clips. So this is also, I'll say, like a directionally very interesting area where they're using structured data for you to inform their natural language processing as to where to look and and sort of where to find things. And you know, we're see- this is not the first time we're seeing structured data sort of, I'll say, provide guidance or instruction. Um, we. We also see this in um, sort of one of the the logo or images structured data, where you're actually providing, um, you know, saying that it's licensable, um, sort of within the structured data. So this came out um, in beta, I think 2019. I sometimes lose track of dates because it's just been so many years that we've been going through this. But um, it was last year that they sort of put it into a full piece where, again, structured data provides licensing guidance. And and so here again in video, we're seeing like point us to where you want natural language processing. So you can see how Google's connecting their different services together. But again, they're using structured data as a way to almost instruct their bots. And, And so this is where, again, like it's more than just getting a rich result. It's sort of broader understanding, providing and making sure they understand the specificity. But now it's also like how you're tying into other kind of technologies that Google Google's offering. So other technologies, you mentioned video there a couple of times, a couple of um, follow up video uh, related questions. First of all, is it better to always have a video answer as well as a text answer to a question? And then secondly, in relation to that, YouTube is obviously the king of video. Um, What happens if um, someone finds your answer on YouTube or in the SERP on a video instead of on your website? Is, Is that not as effective for your brand? Yeah. So I think like, let's ask like YouTube SEO people, like they would say like have things in the description, link into your, you know, link it to your website and so forth. But with regards to structured data and content, what's interesting is that this year, um, you know, 20, 2021, uh, John Mueller talked about sort of um, how you can actually kind of link things together, but you'll usually only get one rich result. Now, I've seen evidence that says otherwise. Like I see people who get, you know, mixes of rich results. And frankly, it's something that we love at Schema App because it's something that we can uh, test, measure, sort of be agile and, and and train with. And so video is actually the, the example that Google used in their documentation to say that if you have recipe rich um, markup and you also nest and connect that like this is the video for this recipe, they will then sort of give you the video rich result or the recipe rich result for a search around that recipe. And so when we talk about sort of, you know, how do you mix these together or sort of should you put, you know, a written answer and a video answer, my answer is yes. Like if you want to try to get different ways of engaging your audience, you know, someone might be looking for a video with regards to looking for a recipe as an example or an answer, or they might be actually wanting to read it. And so you want to actually you know, set yourself up, or we often say like future proof yourself for those different experiences. The other piece is, is that this, this is like a landscape and where Google's changing very often, right? Like we're seeing lots of algorithm changes, lots of testing. And so sort of, you can use structured data to, to prepare your content, to show up for these different types of rich results. Um, and what's interesting is that we see it often based on sort of what the user's intent is as to what Google will offer as the answer. So I would say, yes, like do a video, 
sort of with your content, mark it up. You know, an article has part video or, um, you know, the, the video is about this article. Um, there's ways that you can sort of nest things to be very specific around what is this page holistically about and how do those things come together? So I think it'd be great to leave the listener the reader with a few resources. So maybe um, what's a few resources for, first of all, where to find what structured data to use? And secondly, how to implement that structured data, either if you're a small website and you're not having to do that much of it, or if you're a large website and you're having to do it en masse. Right. So one of the areas I would go is, you know, if, especially the visual changes are, are visual. So there's a gallery sort of in the structured data documentation from Google. The documentation is a bit scary, but the gallery is a way for you to visually sort of start understanding, again, how you make that first impression. So if you're first starting, that's, I think, a great place to start to just say, like, how do I want these things to show up? Um, the second resource, um, if you're trying to figure out, like, your strategy, if you Google how to do schema markup strategy on your website, Website. We actually have a, a webinar and like a step process to help you figure out how to do that. And, and the reason I start there is, is that sort of helps you build your plan. Um, and it sort of t- gives you a great detailed example um, if you have e-commerce and plugins and WordPress uh, to try to kind of help you understand how do you get those quick ends and start stepping towards that. So um, at, at Schemap, we're super passionate about e- educating the market about what they can do. If you're a local business, um, also again, Google local business schema markup, we have a huge guide that walks you through sort of how to do that and what's important there. Again, you know, with the intent of enabling you to do that. Um, And then if you're sort of looking for sort of broader, more enterprise case studies um, and sort of what they did and where they do, um, look under like a schemaapp.com under resources. We have a ton of case studies and so forth that that get into a bit more detail around, you know, how do you be really specific? How do you connect your markup, um, et cetera? Um, With regards to getting it done, there's lots of different options. So I'm a big proponent of plugins. So whether you, um, you you know, part of it is understanding which plugins do what for you. Um, and so, again, look for if there's a way to automate it. Again, Schema App has something for WordPress, Shopify, BigCommerce, um, and Drupal. Um, but Yoast has options. There's other sort of players out there. But again, you know, sort of look for plugins. Um, and then if you're looking for just doing page by page and measuring that and copying and pasting the JSON LD, uh, look for some different um, generators. Um, I, Merkel's generator is one of my favorites that I recommend people look at. So, um, technical SEO, I think is Merkle generator, you'll find it. Um, And they have a great way of kind of filling in a form and putting it. And then if you're looking at doing it at scale with sort of nested uh, complexity and and sort of making sure that you can really do it in a robust, manageable way across any platform, uh, check out schemaapp.com. That's what we do and what we're passionate about. Absolutely superb stuff. Okay. Uh, If you've whetted the appetite um, for uh, schema with so many different SEOs that haven't actually been actively using it that much at the moment, uh, but they're struggling for time. They haven't been, you know, been able to do it because they're doing so many other things. What's something that an SEO typically may have been doing for the last five years or so that hasn't been effective recently that they need to stop doing in order to spend more time focusing on schema? So if you're doing more generic pages like category pages or replicating a certain page with the same content for lots of regions or specific or maybe just changing a couple keywords, I would say like stop doing that, right? Like we're, we need to get more specific. We need to kind of get into sort of that that curated content that's going to answer those questions and sort of look across the board. So I would stop doing that more generic basic um, curation at a category level. Um, and instead uh, focus your time on on sort of using structured data to make that great first impression in search. Great advice. Well, you can find Martha Van Burko over at schemaapp.com. Martha, thanks for, uh, so much for being part of SEO in 2022. Thanks for having me. Check out the rest of the content from SEO in 2022 over at seoin2022.com. <laughs>